Alright, plants can really be broken down into their roots, their stems, and their leaves. We're going to start with the roots. Um, the primary functions of the roots are first to absorb water and nutrients from the soil, and second to transport water and nutrients to other parts of the plant. Other functions that they serve are anchoring the plant, making sure it doesn't fall over, and also storing sugar or glucose as starch, and so they save it for um, later when there might be a drought or something like that. So these are the functions of the root. These are the parts of a root. This is a cross section, so if you took um, a piece of a root and cut it uh, into a slice, this is what you would see. So the outer layer is called the epidermis, um, right under that layer you have the cortex, that's the thick green part, and then the endodermis is the next thin black line um, around the center, and then in the very center you have your vascular bundle that's made up of xylem and phloem. And if we go over here, we see that xylem is the name of the uh, vein that transports water and it's made up of a special kind of cells called tracheid cells, kind of like your trachea, uh, which means tube. And so it's only for moving water through the plant. And then phloem is the special kind of tube that transports food for the plant, and that's things like glucose and other nutrients that it might need. And they, the phloem is made of special cells called sieve tube cells. <clears throat> and so these are the two types of transport systems that make up the vascular bundle. All right, so let's go through what each part of the root does. The epidermis is permeable to water. That means water can soak into it, which is important in the roots because that's where the plant soaks up the water so that it can be transported to other parts of the cell. Um, the cortex is the layer for storage, and so if there's any extra glucose um, that the plant wants to store for a time when there might be a shortage of food, it stores it in its roots in the cortex. Uh, the endodermis is a, a waxy layer that's not permeable to water. So un, unlike the epidermis, the endodermis doesn't let water pass through. It keeps the water from escaping from the vascular bundle. So water can move up through the vascular bundle without seeping out. And the vascular bundle is responsible for moving food through the xylem. Um, sorry, food through the phloem and water through the xylem to other parts of the plant. The best way to remember that that I know is remember the pH makes an F sound, so phloem moves food. That's the easy way to remember xylem. I don't really know a way to remember that that moves water, but if you remember phloem and, flu phloem and food, then you can remember xylem as the other one and it transports water. Okay, so now let's look at stems. Um, in the stem of the plant, its functions are to transport water and nutrients further through the plant, um, so it moves things up from the roots to the leaves, and it also transports sugar and amino acids from the leaves to other parts of the plant. And it also holds the leaves up. Um, you don't usually think about this as a function, but it's important that the leaves be able to gather sunlight, and so it's the job of the stem to hold the leaves up so that they can do that. Secondary functions for the stems are to perform photosynthesis, and this doesn't happen much in the stem, that's why it's a secondary function, but sometimes near the surface of the stem there will be some photosynthesis going on, especially in desert plants. Um, and it's also important for protection from predators and water loss, so if it's a type of plant that has um, thorns, that's the job of the stem to protect the plant. Let's look at the parts of a stem. Inside, in a, on the outside, the green layer around the outside of the stem is the epidermis, just like in the root. And then just inside that layer, you have the kind of bright green layer. That's the cortex, which is also for storage, but it's not going to be as thick as it is in the root. And then just inside that, you have a layer of phloem, cambium, and xylem. And that's what makes up the vascular bundle. Um, just like in the root. And then in the very center you have the pith. So let's look at what each of those layers does in the in the root or in the stem. Um, the epidermis again is a wax or in this in this case is a waxy surface so it no longer is permeable to water. It keeps water in. The cortex is still for storage but it's not going to store as much as the roots do. 
And sometimes in plants that have bark, that's the cortex that forms the bark. The vascular bundle um, includes xylem for moving water, phloem for moving the glucose, and cambium. And cambium is a type of cell um, that's used for growth. It's made of meristem cells, and they, these meristem cells will grow into new xylem and phloem. So if you look again at where the cambium is located, it's right between the xylem and phloem. That's because it's going to become new xylem and new phloem. And if we look over here, meristem cells, it's a word we haven't learned yet, they're special cells that are used for growth. Um, and so we see that they are part of the stem. They're also part of the root. So they're found in the tips of roots and shoots, and they're used for growth. So when you hear meristem, think growth. Now, I wanted to show you what I mean by roots and shoots. So here's a picture of a plant. And the stem part with all the leaves and the flowers above ground, that's called the shoot system. And so that's the shoots of the plant. And then below ground, you've got the root system. So in the roots and shoots means the top part of the plant and the bottom part of the plant. So you've got some growth going on in the meristem cells in the top and bottom. Um, one thing I want to point out on this diagram is that you've got um, a special name for the stem of a leaf, and that is a petiole. So if you see the stem, that's the main stem of the plant, and then next to each leaf you have a little tiny stem, that's called a petiole. Okay, um, <clears throat> so back to our functions for the parts of a stem. So we got the vascular bundle, now we're at the pith. The pith is um, the part in the very middle, and it's pretty much empty space. There's a little bit of um, some cells in there, but it's mostly empty. And it's empty so that it's a hollow stem, so it doesn't add much weight, um, and the stem can grow tall without feeling too heavy and falling over. So that's the purpose of the pith. Okay, now in the leaves. The functions of the leaves are photosynthesis, and it's important to remember the process, the what, that it, it includes water and carbon dioxide. When you add sunlight, those change into glucose and oxygen. Oxygen is the waste product, and glucose is the food for the plant. Um, the other purpose of the leaves is gas exchange, which means they get carbon dioxide from the air and let oxygen out into the air as waste, which is the oxygen that we then breathe. That's why we say that trees and other plants produce oxygen. Other functions for the leaves are they protect from water loss, and they're responsible for transportation a little bit, so they send some glucose to other parts of the plant. Um... In our diagram of a leaf here, we have up at the top the cuticle, that's the brown layer, that's the waxy layer that prevents water loss. Um, just under that we have a layer of cells called the upper epidermis. And then the layer of cells that looks kind of like columns, that's the palisade mesophyll. And the palisade mesophyll is where most of the photosynthesis happens. And then just below that we have the spongy mesophyll. Um, and there's going to be some photosynthesis happening here, but not as much. And then the lower epidermis at the bottom of the leaf with a little bit of a cortex down there too. And then we have down here at the bottom a hole in the bottom of the leaf. That's the stomata, and it's surrounded by guard cells. And we're going to look clo more closely at a stomata right here. So this is a picture of like um, facing the stomata. You can see that when it's open, there's a space between the guard cells, and when it's closed, the two guard cells come together to close that space. Now remember the stomata is for carbon dioxide to come in and oxygen to go out and it's going to lose some water vapor there too so that's what the leaf has to watch out for that it doesn't lose too much water through its stomata. And then over here we're going to have some vascular bundles throughout the leaf and uh, this is a cross section of a leaf so it's like you took a leaf and cut a thin strip of it and so every time you cut across a vein in the leaf, you would see one of these vascular bundles with some xylem and some phloem. Xylem, again, is going to be moving the water. Phloem is moving the glucose or the food. And then if we look at the purposes of all of these things, the cuticle, again, is a waxy layer that keeps water in and protects from water loss. The epidermis is going to be on the top and bottom of the leaf, and it includes the stomata. Sometimes you have stomata on the top. 
Those stomata are holes that are used for gas exchange to let carbon dioxide in and oxygen and water vapor out. The mesophyll, palisade, and spongy are where photosynthesis takes place, and this is where chlorophyll is most highly concentrated. Um, and then you have your vascular bundle, which are the veins of the leaf.